Hey Soundtex, if you're in this business for any appreciable amount of time, you're probably going to experience equipment failures. And one of the failures that you're most likely to experience is a defective microphone cable. I'm going to show you a really easy to build, inexpensive microphone cable tester tool that I use that I find to be super convenient and super handy. And it'll cost just a couple dollars to assemble. Maybe it won't cost you anything if you have a good bucket of spare parts you can scrounge from. And this has been really useful for me. Now, when checking out whether or not a microphone cable is good or bad, if the cable is bad, the experience that you'll have is that you'll probably receive lower output from your microphone. There's three wires in the cable, a ground and two signal leads, and if one of those signal leads gets broken in the cable, you won't have as much signal as you would otherwise, and you'll get lower levels of signal off the microphone and potentially more noise. So that's a clue. Or maybe the microphone line won't work at all. In any case, it's not a good thing. Now, if you want to check out your cable, you can, of course, just grab a volt ohm meter and check for continuity between pin one on one side and pin one on the far side, and then do the same thing for pins two and three, and make sure you've got continuity across all of those pins. Then do a quick check to make sure that none of the pins are shorted across each other so there's no shorts between one and two or one and three or two and three or anything like that and that's not super difficult to do it's a little bit tedious with a meter and so you can purchase a cable tester tool where you plug both ends of the cable in and there's a series of lights on the device that lets you know if all of the wires in the cable are properly connected and uh, don't have any breaks in them. And that's a really handy tool if you want to sit through a box of cables and just check all your cables out. The problem that I had was I was working at a lot of different bar restaurant venues and I would come in and sometimes use their house PA system. And when I would come in, I would look at the collection of equipment they had, which is often not in the best of condition and question, I wonder if everything's working. And I wanted to know if the microphone connections on the stage were in good shape all the way back to the mixing board on the other side of the room. And because the connectors are on opposite sides of the room where the microphones are versus the mixing board, it's not real easy to get a cable tester in there to plug both ends of that cable in to make sure that all my cable runs are in good shape before I start wiring up the band for the show. And so I made a cable tester that lets me suss out the venue wiring really quick and check for microphone cables that could have a break in them. And I do this by leveraging the phantom power in the mixing board. All you need to do is turn on phantom power on the microphone channels and that will put 48 volts DC down the two signal lines on the microphone cable. And so I should see from pin 1, the ground pin, to pins 2 and to pins 3, 48 volts sitting there if all of the wires are in good condition on that line. So to do that, I just grabbed a XLR connector. This is a male XLR connector, so it's got pins on it like you would have on the bottom of your microphone. I took the rubber boot off the end of it, and I put a pair of LEDs in here. And those LEDs are wired up between pin 1, ground, and pin 2, and pin 3. One LED is on pin 2, and the other LED is on pin 3. And so if pin 2 and pin 3 have voltage on them, it's going to turn on the LEDs. And if I get two LEDs lit up on this connector, I know that that signal line is good. So all I need to do when I walk into a new venue and I want to make sure that all of the microphone connections are good before I start mapping out where I'm going to plug all the instruments in for the night show, is I'll turn phantom power on on the mixing board or I'll enable phantom power on all of the mic channels. And then I will go up to the stage box and I just plug this little tester plug 
into each of the microphone connections on stage. And of course, I can do that really quick, just boom, 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 through all 16 or 24 or however many there might be up there. And if I get dual light indications on each one, I know that all those lines are good. Obviously, if I don't get that indication on one of those channels, I X that channel out and I skip it in my setup. So let's take a real quick look at this device. So here's the tester. It's just a XLR connector. It's a male XLR connector with the pins in it, just like the microphone would have on the back end of the mic. And on the other end, I've removed the rubber boot and just have a couple of LEDs showing. And so if I wanted to test a cable, all I would have to do is connect it uh, there we go, to the cable. And if that cable has phantom power enabled on it, you'll see that the LEDs light up nicely, showing that signal lines 2 and 3 are carrying signal, or phantom power in this case, to the tester. Unplug that. And the LEDs go off. So if you'd like to make one of these cable tester tools, all you need is a XLR connector, which is a male, and two LEDs, and two current limiting resistors. An LED, once it turns on, acts more or less like a short circuit and will pass as much current through it as it possibly can. But we only want to pass between uh, perhaps 2 to 20 milliamps of current. Otherwise, we'll put undue load on the phantom power supply and we'll put too much current through the LED and that could damage the LED and burn the LED out. So we need two LEDs and two current limiting resistors. And with a 48 volt supply, you know, can work out the math, but those resistors should probably be somewhere in the ballpark of 4.7 K ohms up to about 10 K ohms somewhere in that range. It's not super critical. So if you have a couple of resistors in your pile of spare parts that are in that range, a couple of LEDs, and a male XLR connector, you can just hook this up and make yourself a handy little cable tester that will let you quickly wring out your microphone cables to make sure that they're working properly. Once again, you want to connect the LEDs one side of it, one leg, to ground and the other leg to a resistor and then the other side of that resistor goes to pin 2 and then do the same thing for pin 3. And of course make sure to get the LED in in proper polarity so the plus side of the LED is attached to the signal line on pin 2 or pin 3. So this is a super easy to assemble and a fast cable checker if you want to check out all of your microphone cables on stage to make sure that you don't have any breaks in the cable. Now it's a really simple little tester and it can't test for every possible failure condition but it checks for situations where one of the lines in the cable isn't making a proper connection. If lines two or three one of the signal lines aren't working only one of the LEDs will turn on. If the ground is broken, then neither one of these lights will turn on. Now there are some rare conditions where you could get an OK indication on the tester, but the cable still has a problem, which would be in the case where there is a short in the cable between lines 2 and 3. So that's a possibility, but it's a rarity. Typically, cables have breaks rather than shorts. I encourage you to make one of these for yourself if you're in the industry. I think it's super handy. If you enjoyed the tip, please throw me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you like the content. Thanks for tuning in.